Thank you for watching this video. Today we will be doing technical analysis on the stock market for the week ending Friday, December 18th, 2020. And for this analysis, we will be using stockcharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. My name is Rodney Constable. I have over 30 years of investing experience, including over 25 years of experience trading stocks and options. I am a former financial advisor, a former vice president of a major mutual fund company, and I am the president and founder of Simple Market Signals at simplemarketsignals.com. Simple Market Signals is my proprietary trend following system that also includes a stock market risk level component. We're going to start off with the S&P 500 today, and the S&P 500 was down 35 basis points for the day, and we closed at 3709.41. The first chart that we're going to look at is a two-day, two-minute candlestick chart of the S&P 500, so each candlestick does represent two minutes of trading. What we can see here is right from the opening of trading today, the market was selling off and pretty negative for the majority of the day until about 3.30 this afternoon, where we got down to 36.86 on the S&P 500. And at that point, it was looking like we were going to close at the lows of the session, down 1% or so for the day. And then we had a really nice push for the last half hour of trading that got us back above the 3,700 level on the S&P 500. The next chart that we're going to look at is a four-month daily candlestick chart of the S&P 500. So each candlestick does represent one day of trading on this chart. Of course, yesterday we hit our all-time closing high on the S&P 500, where we closed at 3722.48. And today, the good thing is, by the end of the day, we were only down 35 basis points, but uh, obviously a negative day for the day. The good news is we now have three days in a row where we have closed above 3700 and including the 8th of December. That was the first time we ever closed above 3,700 on the S&P 500. We now have four successful closes above 3,700 on the S&P 500. The next chart that we're going to look at is a six-month weekly candlestick chart of the S&P 500. And the first thing I want to point out is with today's close at 3709.41, this was an all-time weekly closing high in the S&P 500. We were up 1.25% for the week on the S&P 500. And after being at negative last week, that uh, pretty nice, pretty nice week there. And again, a all-time weekly closing high. And two weeks ago, on the 4th, December 4th, we had closed at 3699.12. And again, as I was pointing out right here, for the majority of today, it looked like we were going to close lower than what we did even two weeks ago. And uh, you know, then we had that really nice rally over the last half hour of trading that, uh, that saved us and pushed us to an all-time weekly closing high in the S&P 500. Again, for the week, we were up 1.25%, and we closed at 3709.41. The next chart that we're going to look at is a three and a half year weekly candlestick chart of the S&P 500. So each candlestick represents one week of trading on this. And what I want to talk about here is this trend line that I drew across the peaks in the market going back to 2018. And of course, the peak that we had in February just before the downturn. And over the last four weeks, we've gotten above this trend line. Okay. So you know, that kind of points to the fact that from a technical perspective, this market may be overextended. Generally, when you get to these peaks, you can see that we pull back, okay? And generally, and I don't have it on this chart, but generally we would pull back to somewhere around the 200-day, or in this case, the 40-week moving average. I just don't have the moving average on this chart for the day. But the fact that we're above this trend line for the last four weeks, you know, maybe the market is shifting into a new higher gear here, guys, with all those stimulus and uh, super low interest rates. That is completely possible, but it does make us vulnerable to a pullback in the markets, at least in the short term. And, you know, over the last few weeks, the, you know, the, the, the trading, and especially you can see it on the daily charts, the trading has been very, very choppy. And until this week, we hadn't had three positive days in a row in the S&P 500 since the beginning of November, where we had four positive days in a row. But from that point, you know, the most we could put together was two positive days in a row on the S&P 500 again until this week. So it just kind of looks like these markets might be getting a little bit tired here. So definitely something to uh, 
to keep in mind. And of course, if we start to you know roll over and trade beneath this trend line, we will have our answer that these markets are starting to weaken. The next chart that we're going to look at is a six-month weekly candlestick chart for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the Dow was up 44 basis points for the week, and we closed at 30,179.05. And what we know is that two weeks ago, on December 4th, we closed at 30,218.26. So we closed a little bit lower this week than we did even two weeks ago. So what I'm pointing out here, guys, is kind of this sideways trading action in some of these major indices over the last few weeks, whether it's the S&P 500. Yes, we're slightly higher than what we were a couple of weeks ago, but predominantly we kind of been going sideways here for about the last three weeks. So it looks to me like these markets might be getting a little tired here where we're starting to see a little bit of exhaustion creep into these markets. The next chart that we're going to look at is for the Triple Q. Of course, the Triple Q is the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. And the Triple Qs were up 2.72% for the week and closed at a new all-time weekly closing high of 310.06. The one thing I don't like about the way the Qs have been trading over the last couple of months is the low volume that we've seen on some of these weeks where the market advanced. This week's volume wasn't too bad, but we've seen some pretty low volume weeks while the market rallied. And sometimes that, uh, again, just shows the lack of conviction and uh, the fact that the markets might be getting a little tired here, a little exhausted. So overall, not a bad week in the markets, right? We hit some all-time highs yesterday in, in many areas of the stock market. But it does look like, based on the trading over the last few weeks in the overall market, it looks like these markets might be getting a little tired here, a little exhausted, okay? So make sure you have a good risk management system in place to help manage your overall stock market risk exposure because at some point we're going to have a pullback here okay and you know it could be you know three to five percent it could be ten to fifteen percent right none of us know but we have come a long way in a short period of time so with that said I'm going to tee up some information about my personal risk management system. I hope you'll take a serious look at it, guys. If you're running any of your own money or if you're a financial advisor running money for other people, with these super low interest rates, guys, bonds aren't going to work like they used to. And I think an active management component is going to be essential to help mitigate risk in the overall market. So with that said, I'm going to tee up some information about simple market signals. Please pay close attention to the balance of this video. It can make a big difference for you going forward. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a stock market risk management system? Something that helps you understand the various risk levels in the stock market on an ongoing basis? Do you know when it's safest to be in equities? Do you know when it's most dangerous to be in equities? Do you know the direction of the short-term trend on an ongoing basis? Do you know the direction of the overall trend in the stock market? My system is called Simple Market Signals. Simple Market Signals is market-based. There's no opinions, forecasts, or guesswork in Simple Market Signals. It took me over 20 years to develop Simple Market Signals. I developed Simple Market Signals by reverse engineering the stock market. And I studied the stock market over numerous time frames, including in numerous bull and bear markets. And what I found is that certain conditions exist during these various market phases. And then based on that information, I created simple, easy to understand signals around these different phases of the market. And the thing is that most people don't know about or have access to the data necessary to do the research that I had to do to put together this model. Now let's take a look at the signals. The red signal has the highest equity risk associated with it, and the worst sell offs, including bear markets, will happen when the signal is red. When the signal is yellow, this means that equity risk is moderate and sideways to slightly up or down price action is very common during a yellow signal environment. The green signal is the best signal. It has the lowest equity risk associated with it. 
and most all upward progress in the stock market will be made in a green signal environment. Said another way, it is very hard to make money in equities unless the signal is green. Okay, a quick refresher on the simple market signals, weekly signals, and how they can help you. The signals are green, yellow, and red. The green signal is the best risk-reward ratio for equity investors, and what you're going to find is that the stock market makes most of its upward progress when the signal is green, okay? The worst risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is red, and what you're going to find is that bear markets and the worst downturns in the stock market happen when the signal is red like during the 07 through 09 bear market as we see here so again the best risk reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is green and the worst risk reward signal for equity investors is when the signal is red now let's take a look at the first three months of 2020 so you can see how simple market signals could have helped you in the most recent downturn. We know that we came into the year with a strong stock market, so we had a green signal for the majority of January, but on January 27th, the signal went yellow for a couple of weeks. We went back to green in the first part of February, and I warned my newsletter subscribers on Saturday, the 22nd of February, that I felt like uh, the market it was starting to roll over and that uh, that we were that things were changing and so i gave people a heads up right here uh, over the weekend and i told them that if the market continued to sell off that we would probably see at least a yellow signal if not worse the following week and that's exactly what happened on the 24th the simple market signals risk signal went yellow now one of the other things that i want to point out here is in addition to the risk signal i also have several trend direction indicators in this simple market signals model. Now, the longer term one is called the general trend indicator, and the general trend indicator went negative on the 25th. So on the 24th, the signal went yellow. The general trend indicator went negative on the 25th, and then two days later, the signal went red. The risk signal went red. So think about this. All in one week, just a few days apart, we had a yellow signal, we had the general trend indicator went negative, and then we had the risk signal went red on the 27th. That was Thursday, all right? And by the way, this general trend indicator is a positive-negative signal, and it operates totally independently of the risk signals. It's just trend. So the general trend indicator gives you still another way to monitor and control risk in your portfolio. And guys, that general trend indicator had been positive since October and then went negative. So right there, just those two signals alone told us that something was changing in the stock market. And then by the 27th, the signal had went red, and we can see here that the market fell from there. As part of the simple market signals model, there are three powerful indicators. There's the simple market signals proprietary risk level signal. There's the short-term trend indicator, which helps clarify short-term moves in the overall U.S. stock market. And a normal signal length for the short-term trend indicator is anywhere from one or two days to seven plus weeks. Then there's the general trend indicator, which is designed to stay positive during the bulk of most uptrends and negative during the bulk of most downtrends. And a normal signal length for the general trend indicator is anywhere from two weeks to five plus months. We disseminate the information through the Simple Market Signals weekly newsletter. In the weekly newsletter, you will receive the proprietary risk level signal on the overall U.S. stock market. You will also receive the proprietary risk level signal on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. You will also receive the short-term trend indicator signal. You will also receive the general trend indicator signal. You will also receive market and sector performance information over multiple time frames. You will receive a recap of what happened in the stock market for the past week. You'll also receive technical analysis information, fundamental analysis information, and yield curve information. There is a ton of information every week in the Simple Market Signals newsletter.
And a subscription to Simple Market Signals is just nineteen ninety five per month. That's less than sixty seven cents per day. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There are no contracts. You can cancel any time, and your first two weeks are free. And guys, I want to set realistic expectations here. Okay, the newsletter isn't fancy. It's effective. It's plain text, no color, no fluff. And please note that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to subscribe to Simple Market Signals. And again, that is just due to international compliance regulations. Now let's recap what you will get with your Simple Market Signals subscription. You will get the weekly emailed newsletter with all of the contents we just talked about, you will also receive special midweek updates when warranted. So if there's a major signal or direction change in the middle of the week, we're not going to wait until the weekend to get you that information. We're going to get that information to you as soon as possible via a special midweek update email. The best fit for a Simple Market Signal subscriber is an investor or trader with at least a six to eight week plus time frame that they're focusing on. If you're a day trader or a really short-term trader, Simple Market Signals may help you a little bit, but the reality is Simple Market Signals is designed for those investors and traders with at least a six to eight week plus time frame that they're focusing on. And if you would like even more information about how you can benefit from Simple Market Signals, I have the following videos that will be linked in the description box below this video. And to subscribe to Simple Market Signals, you just need to go to the website that you see on the screen here. That's https colon two forward slashes simplemarketsignals.com. It'll take you about four minutes to subscribe. It's that easy. Once you reach the website, the first thing you will need to do is accept the cookies. Please notice that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to use this website or our services. And that is just due to international compliance regulations. All right, so to get started, all you have to do is click this green button, and that will take you to the product page. And this explains, of course, uh, what you get with your subscription. And then just make sure that that says one, because if there's more than one in there, if you have a two or a three, you'll get multiple subscriptions to the service and you only need one. Click the sign up now button and that will take you to the checkout page. Once you're on the checkout page, fill in the necessary information, anything that is required, including the email address. Keep in mind that this is an email newsletter, so we will have to have your best email address on file. And make sure this box is checked because that's how your email address gets into the system. So if that is unchecked, your email won't get transferred into the Simple Market Signals system and you won't get your newsletters. So please make sure that box is checked. And then, of course, uh, just double check. Make sure that your monthly total is going to be nineteen ninety five a month. Remember that your first two weeks are free, so your first renewal date will be two weeks after your subscription date. Fill in your credit card information. You will need to accept the privacy policy and check that box that uh, says you've read and agreed to the terms and conditions. Click the Sign Up Now button, and it's that easy, guys. It's probably going to take you maybe four or five minutes total to fill in everything and subscribe to Simple Market Signals. Now, when you subscribe, okay, understand that everything is tied to your email on file. All right. So once you subscribe, you go out to the website, simplemarketsignals.com, and it'll take you maybe five minutes to subscribe. It's pretty easy. And you just follow the prompts and then your, you know, your email on file is then going to drive everything going forward. This is an emailed newsletter subscription. That's how we disseminate the information. And you're, you should get an immediate emailed confirmation of your subscription. You will also receive an automatic welcome letter that is automatically generated once you subscribe. So if you don't get that welcome letter beyond your confirmation okay, of the subscription, if you don't get that welcome letter, if you don't see it in your in basket, then go check your spam, your junk, or your promotion folders, especially in Gmail, having a lot of people that are having the uh, newsletters and everything coming from Simple Market Signals going into the promotion folder. So please make sure that you check your spam, your junk, and your promotion folders and also understand that the newsletters go out on the weekend, all right? So the goal is to get it out 
Saturdays by 2 p.m., but it could be any time over the weekend, depending on, on uh, you know, how long it's taken me to do the uh, research necessary for that week's newsletter. But I try to get it out by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday if I can. Uh, again, earlier if I can make that happen. And then the next edition, right, once you subscribe, understand that the next edition, right, so if you just subscribe on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, the next regular edition is going to be set out on Saturday. All right. And then once you subscribe, we will send you as soon as we can the latest edition, but we have to send that out manually. So just be patient with us. But again, within a, a day or two of your subscription, if you don't get this latest edition, then go back and check your spam junk and promotion folders um, because it's probably hidden in there. All right. So you should get the automatic welcome letter. And then the latest edition within the, next, within the next day or two of your subscription. And then again, the standard newsletter goes out every weekend. But we try to make it no later than 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on any Saturday.